Okay, so I got a valve body here off a uh, 6T75 Generation 2. Now, I don't have the tool yet to fix this, but uh, it's on order. Uh, it's something that I need to get because I'm, I'm uh, so far, this, this right here had tested okay except one. And uh, where I have it here, I have two circuits. I, actually, I have two... Uh, you, you see this two uh, uh, dampeners uh, or accumulator dampeners uh, or solenoid dampeners, whatever they're called. Uh, they're on one circuit here. And as you can see, uh, it has an opening right here and it has an opening right here. And they both dampen, you know, the solenoids individually. And then you have back pressure going into this circuit here. It goes to the back of the worm uh, of the uh, worm tracks and it comes out to here so i have to plug this hole and i have to cover both of them so i have to test this both at the same time now uh before you begin you know using it you always calibrate it so we gotta have five and 25 depending on humidity you know your temperature and whatever we are at 24 and a half i'm gonna uh just uh, move it a little bit so that I can be at 5 and 25. So now we are at 25, right on the money. And we're at 5, you adjust this to 5 and the other at 25. And when you have it open, you know, this is a 35, 30 or 35 thousandths of an, of an inch uh, calibration hole. And so you calibrate it to third for that leakage. Now, uh, I always put a little bit of assembly lube, you know, because. Uh, I mean, just to uh, create a good seal. And when I plug this, I mean, it's 25. So it's, it's just like, like when you're calibrating it. Uh, so I'm going to add some more assembly loop here in this passage. And I'm going to have to plug that hole. Let's look at the reading on this one. So there's nothing there because it's an it's an open channel circuit or whatever. So I have to plug this. So I'm uh, keep in mind that I'm checking too. So that's a real good. Uh, it's over 15, so it's actually 16, 17 uh, inches in mercury. I let go of this hole right here and uh, go down to zero, like an opening right there. But this is my best one right here so far. Uh, this is at almost, it's above 20. I know that for sure. I mean, that's what I tested it a while ago. Now, this uh, 6T75 has had minor issues, but I'm still testing this, okay? See, that's a perfect, now it's giving me a perfect, a perfect seal on on this one this is my best one so far this one not so well and i mean you always have to make sure where the worm tracks go and uh kind of spread the assembly loop a little bit to make sure that you have good contact and you don't have no leakage and i always try to put it right above the spring and you see this one? This this was this is my lowest one. This is at 13. I think that needs to be repaired. This one, I don't remember which one it was. I should be writing them down, but I'm doing this video, uh, this short little video, how to you know do the test on this. Sometimes you have a lot of lube on top that you can barely see the see through the plexiglass. Well, I thought that was my lowest one, but this is my lowest one right here. And this does, this mat does create a, a good vacuum. I mean, if I put this on here, you can see it goes to 25. So, I mean, this foam pad right here, it's it's, it's pretty good seal to have underneath. But this is my lowest one, I guess. I thought the other one was my lowest one. And then we have this one over here. We got six of them. So these two are considered, this is the bad one, and this is, uh, I guess, bad as well. These two are good, 
And if they were tested individually, I would think that it would be the same outcome as this one. So these two are kind of kind of iffy. Let's check this one out. I think that's what this one tested good too. For some reason, I'm not getting a good reading. I'm not on it. Here we go. He falls down. Why does this thing fall down? I mean, it's hard to pick up, like if I had good backing, but the reading is not. It's not right. So we got three of them. This one probably has some side wear for it to be fluctuating like that. So we got 10, 13, and this one I forgot the number. But there you have it on video. Uh, anyways, uh, I got that thing, that thing coming. Maybe uh, I do have another valve body that's no good. And my, when I say no good, it has no reverse. It has one, two only. Uh, this is from another unit. But it's, it's also Gen 2, the one, the other one that I have. That other one, we're gonna go through the whole valve body, and we're gonna we're gonna try and find out why in the hill it has no reverse, and it has no uh, three, four, five, six. It only has one, two. I thought it was a solenoid on the computer. You know, I mean not the computer, but the solenoid. Yeah, the the Tecum replaced that. Checked the whole unit. Nothing was wrong with it. Checked the valve body. It looked perfect. I just had another valve body laying around, another Gen 2. Put that thing on there. That thing works perfect. So it is the valve body for sure. Now I have to look and see what the hell's going on with it. But there you go. It's just a basic testing on on this kind of deal. Uh, and this is my best one right here. Look at that. I don't even have to press on it. I mean, it immediately goes up. And yeah, I don't have any other circuits crossing or anything like that, but I mean, it is what it is. So there you go, guys. Uh, 6075 Gen 2 uh, accumulator dampeners or solenoid dampeners uh, testing. And I guess uh, look forward for the, uh, for the 6075 Gen 2 valve body that has no reverse, no uh, third, four, fifth, and sixth.